Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to have you here reviewing the action of the final night of racing here of the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Joining me once again is the amazing Bailey Jackson, Penilla Bloomer, Anthony Irvin, and of course, the amazing, incredible, fun, fabulous Kate Campbell. Kate, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much for having me. We're stoked to have you here. This is About Last Night. Well, as I said, last night was the final night of racing. So before we jump into it to recap some of that action, we're gonna take a look at your screens and we're gonna look at that final medal table. So the United States out in front, a total of 28 medals with eight golds. Australia just behind them, 18 medals with seven golds. And France had an amazing performance. The hometown team up there with seven medals uh, and four of them were gold. So that was the medal table. We also had records this week. We had three world records and 14 Olympic records. Now two, of those world records happened on the last night. So guys, let's dive into it. We started uh, with that 50 meter freestyle. Kate, you're a sprinter. Give us your thoughts. Oh my goodness, wasn't Sarah just incredible? The Viking queen <laughs> strikes again. She set an Olympic record in the semifinals and all she needed to do was replicate that swim and she was just off it in the final and she touched the wall clearly in front and claimed her crown and I, I couldn't be happier for her. I mean, it was an amazing swimmer. She's been on fire all week. We watched her do that 100, didn't we turn in, now into the 50. And she just looks like she's having fun out there, right? Yeah, what a thrill. You're already Olympic champion in a surprise event. Come out in the 50 free, which she's been training on for quite a while now. And just the way she does it, her approach, she's both strong, but she's patient. She really gathers the water and swims into the 50. I love to see that because that's how I used to do it. <laughs> she got tips from, from you, I suppose. Uh, you know, and it, it was wonderful to see her do that. And Penilla, I want to ask you, sort of coming into a race like that, you know, she's got that gold medal already. Does that take the pressure off these races? I don't think so. I actually would say it just adds more pressure because now you already delivered a good result. So everyone is expecting you to deliver another good result. And Sarah, she does it with so much grace. She, I think she's a great champion, the way she looks before, you know, jumping in the water, when she enters the pool, she looks so relaxed, she looks like she's just there having fun, enjoying herself, and that's really something to look up to, I think, that's very inspiring. Mm, absolutely, and speaking of inspiring, it was wonderful and inspiring to me to see Meg Harris there, the Aussie girl getting that silver medal. So Kate, dive in on that one. We oh, love Meg. We <laughs> love Meg. She is such a wonderful girl. She's actually legally deaf. Mm -hmm. So she, she could have actually swum in the paras, but she chooses to swim as an able-bodied athlete. Uh, so she has hearing aids and she is very good at lip reading. So if you're saying something shady about her from across the room, you better watch out because she'll be able to read it. Not that anyone's saying anything shady about her. She's just like one of the most delightful, wonderful human beings. And she swam a PB in an Olympic final. She picked up a silver medal. I think she was as shocked as everyone else. And it was just the joy on her face. Her smile just went from ear to ear and it couldn't have happened to a better person. And that's kind of what you hope, right? Like you train and you want to peak when you peak. And she peaked in an Olympic final. Like it doesn't get better for an athlete, right? No, and she broke the 24 second mark as yes. well. She dipped under the 24 second mark with a 23.97. Yes. Incredible. And I believe she's been representing Australia on the world stage for quite some time, and that is a very competitive team. And finally getting there on the podium, she got to be thrilled. Her whole family, everybody that supported her all this time. Yeah, it was amazing. And of course, we had Zhang Yufei from China, one of the most versatile athletes we've seen in there this week. She's out there winning, you know, competing and meddling in the two fly, back with a 50 free. Um, we were sort of discussing this before we came in here, Kate. How would you train for that, right? <laughs> Well, I think that you train for a 200 butterfly and then you just swim the 50 meters freestyle would kind of be the way that I would go around that. I think that to reverse engineer that and train for a 50 freestyle and then go and do a 200 butterfly, you've got that the wrong way around. I don't see Cam McAvoy entering the 200 meter butterfly anytime soon. And of course, he's a 50 meter specialist. The gauntlet has been laid though, Cam. I'd love to see it. Maybe the next one, who knows? I would like to see that too. <laughs> Tony, as a sprinter yourself, I'm curious to hear your take on it. How would you train? 
For the 200 butterfly? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. For the for this like sprinting portion for the 50. For the sprinting part of it? Yeah. <laughs> if I assert myself into an alternate reality where I am a 200 butterflyer, I'd be like sometimes like coach, time out. Today's a 50 day. Yeah. You know, like so perhaps you just need that recovery, or maybe she just has such a remarkable feel for the water that she is that versatile, and she has both the conditioning to do a 200 butterfly and really to get it done in a short sprint and the 50 freestyle. Yeah, and we loved it with the panda ears as well in that oh middle ceremony. Oh my god, that was, that was one of the highlights of the night for me. I was obsessed. I, know, I just I know. love her. She's got such a great personality, you know, and you see it shine through from her. It's wonderful to see that from Team China. Um, but that was, of course, how we started the night. We then moved into an amazing race, a world record race. The men's 1500 meter freestyle, this world record has stood since London 2012. It was amazing to see it. I'm gonna pass this to you, Tony, because it was your countryman who did it, Bobby Fink. What a brave swim. Bobby Fink makes it happen. And you know what, the whole time, the whole crowd was aware of the world record line. But those of us a little bit more in the know, we remember that Soon Yang, he finished that 1500 in like a 25 second split. Mm -hmm. So even though we're all cheering for it and wanting the world record, like that is very difficult. But Bobby got it done. He kicked into that overdrive, that low gear that we all know and have seen before, gets his hand on the wall, smashes the record. And it, it, I'd be curious to know, you know, distance swimmers know their times. They understand stroke rates, they know how they need to hit or what they're trying to get around. I wonder if he knew that he was on that pace. I mean, the crowd was certainly behind him, but I wonder if like he knew that. I've never swum a 1500, so I can't tell you. <laughs> um, but I, I would say that he would be able to know that he's doing something pretty special. As yeah. a swimmer, you can definitely feel when you're on. And mm. even when things are hurting and it's hard, there's something, there's an ease to it and a flow and a connection and a oneness with the water. And it's almost like you almost have this ability to come out of yourself and watch yourself swim. It's like, almost like an out of body experience when you're having a really good race. And, and I think that when you're on world record pace, even in a 1500, you would be able to dip in and out of that state and I'm I'm sure he could hear the crowd because by the end everyone was on their feet everyone was clapping and cheering and screaming and yeah it was it was phenomenal and hats off to him and and like really an upset because I really thought that Daniel Whiffen was going to get there after his win in the 800 and yeah and he had really come out strong and said no one's going to beat me in this 1500 and then Bobby went ha, have you met me <laughs> no, no, literally that literally that and you know I think a big mention as well we haven't mentioned Greg Paltrinieri as well he put in a, an incredible race as well. He was there right behind Bobby. I mean, he sort of ramped up sort of about halfway through, sort of once we got to that sort of 750, 800 mark. And then he didn't disappear. He was right behind for that silver medal, but just couldn't quite catch him. Oh, I thought they were, they were looking at each other the whole time. The whole way. The whole time. Yeah. And, and maybe Bobby was pacing off of him a little bit, making sure that he was staying ahead of Peltonary, mm -hmm. knowing that he was gonna be a big threat towards the end of the race. But I think there's, there's a lot to be said about the relationship between the coach and the athlete in preparation, right? Mm. He's doing paces, coach is giving him times, right? The coach is giving him, is he giving him an accurate time or the time he needs to hear to believe that what he's gonna do next is going to be what he wants. Mm. So I think there's something there, but also having Paul there, pushing him to be the best he could possibly be, that was a great race. Is it better to be the chaser or the chasee in a race like that? Depends how much energy you've got at the back end of a race. There is nothing worse than being out in front and seeing people catching you and knowing that you can do absolutely nothing. So if you are dying and you're hurting out in front, absolutely that is the worst. Yeah. However, conversely, there is nothing better than like seeing someone die on your left side and you're just like, yep. I'm gonna get them, I'm gonna get them, I'm feeling really good. So, but I, I think that like what I love to see about these two athletes was they just pushed each other the whole way. And that is what we want. Like we want to see competition. We want to see tight races. And I would say that Bobby and Gregorio have so much respect for each other because they know that without the other person, they wouldn't have got that result. They wouldn't have got to their limit and the absolute best out of each other. Mm. And I think that that is what we got to see in a 1500 meters. Mm. And I, you know, we've spoken about this a couple of times this week, but I'm so excited as to where men's distance swimming is right now in the world. Like I think these youngsters that have come through and we've got some of those, you know, guys that have been kicking around for a while still in there. The races are amazing. It is like a race, a proper mm. race and the strategies come out. Um, and what I'm loving as well is the crossover we're now seeing with a lot more open water swimmers coming into the pool and vice versa. You know, we had David Bethlehem, he placed um, fourth in this, wasn't even expecting to make the final, swim in the 10K, you know, I think it's in a good place. You Can know. you imagine if for you 1500 meters was a sprint? Yeah, like yeah, that I is just so wild. Like, you know, oh yeah, 
I swim 10k, but I'm just going to do a little sprint, a cheeky 1500. Like, just absolutely to warm up not. before the open water not. competition. Coming fourth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. still upcoming. Like uh, the three of them, uh, not Bobby, but Palchinari, Wiffin, and Bethlehem. Yeah. All open water. Yes. yes. We yes. still have competition in front of them. So it was a fantastic race. I loved it. And then we, of course, moved into those two relays. We're going to start with the men's 4x100 medley relay. A big one, Tony. I know this one hurt a little bit for you. So uh, I'm going to pass it off to you and have you talk about it. Because <laughs> I'm kind like that. Oh, great. Yes. Yeah. Well, Team USA had won this relay every single Olympic Games, aside from the boycott one in 1980. And so uh, it does sting a bit. Mm. But we're not, we're not going to give up. We're going to come back. We're going to build back stronger. But absolutely hats off to China. They came out. They were ready to race. Incredible legs. Backstroke. Chin finally finding his breaststroke on that relay, and then pan. Mm. I mean, come on. Fastest relay split of all time. Wow. 45 nine. 45 nine. Insane. What can you do against that? Like, it's yeah. just, yeah. And, and I think that Chin had the fastest male breaststroker leg mm. as well. So, you mm. know, they, they had just some phenomenal splits there. Mm. And it was, it's been really nice to see him find his feet here. I know we were sort of, there were a lot of eyes on him coming into this race and how he was going to perform. And individually, I don't think he's been happy or has performed how he expected himself to. But in the relays, he stepped up and it's, you know, nice to see him do that for his team and getting a gold. Great for them. And then, of course, we had Team USA. It was close, though. It was very close. It was hotly contested. It was a great race. <laughs> it was. It yeah, was. And it France was. in the mix as well. Lead changes coming all the way into the last 50. Yeah. 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 And what, uh, you know, what a way to finish with Team France getting that bronze medal. Oh my Come on, gosh. guys. Yeah. And the atmosphere when they walked out on pool deck. I mean, the atmosphere when any French uh, team or competitor walks out is just electric. And then you've got Florent Manadou, who behind the starting blocks is clapping mm. and getting the whole crowd involved, like really soaking it up. And that's what a home Olympics is about. Like if you are not engaging and interacting with the crowd, you're missing out on such a unique opportunity. You know, Michael Phelps, the greatest Olympian of all time, never got a home Olympic Games to compete in front of his home crowd and to really soak it up. And I just love how much appreciation the French fans showed for their athletes. Uh, you know, it, it, not even when they were winning or, or winning medals. Uh, there was this moment in the 200 IM semifinals when the Charlotte Bonnet, uh, she, was, she was coming last in that semifinal. And every time she came up for her breaststroke stroke, the whole crowd was yelling, Ale, Ale. And then she got out of the pool and she waved and she cheered and everyone was on her side. And I was like, this is what sport is about. Yes, it is about our medals and yes, it's about our world records, but it's also about going out there and giving your best and the appreciation and the love that the French have shown their athletes has been spine tingling. So um, Anthony, I hope that you're excited for LA because I'm sure LA. that oh my I'm God. sure that the Americans are just going to go absolutely bananas. Absolutely, they truly are. You know, and you saying that about the, the, the pool there, it really has been magic. There's been magic that we watched happen in that pool this week. And I've not seen that in a while, like in a pool, it was incredible. Well, it's been fun for the crowd too. I think that's like the underlying key theme to it. It's fun, especially in these last few days where it's you know, more team involved. I feel like all the swimmers that we've talked to so far have said, you know, it's a little bit more of a load off of my back, you know, just going into it and enjoying the moment, right? You can definitely tell. You can definitely tell. It's a good environment, not only on the pool deck, but in the crowd. Mm. Yeah. Joyous. Joyous, I Very think is the joyous. word. Yeah. I think it's been like, like it's nine days. It's yeah. a long time. Um, it's a long time to stay in that zone. And, you know, they did it. And I think the crowd really helped get them there. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, but we finished with another world record. Second of the night was the women's 4x100 meter medley relay. Team USA getting that world record. Fantastic for them. And, uh, you know, a great way for them to sort of finish off their Olympic campaign of 2024. Incredible relay. I'm so very proud of these ladies from Team USA just coming out ready to win. Regan Smith leading off with the time that would have won the individual race. Backed it up with Lily King. Didn't quite make the final in the 100 breast, but here she showed up. Had one of the fastest splits out there. Gretchen Walsh, world record holder in the 100 butterfly, and then Tori Husk. What an incredible meet that she has had in finishing it with a win. Yeah, I actually think that Gretchen Walsh's split was 55.03, which is tied for the fastest ever relay split for a hundred butterfly. So wow. no pun intended, but she absolutely flew. Yes. It was, it was just, it, it, 
everyone, uh, like what you said, Tony, everyone did their job and mm. executed their best race. And we saw them lift and go above and beyond what they did in their individual swims. And mm. I think that that speaks mm. to the power of the relay and the power of the team. And you saw them come out as this united force and really they laid it all on the line and came away with the goods with a gold medal and a world record and congratulations to them. Absolutely. You know, it was, and it was the last race of the night. It was a fantastic way for us to go out. Team Australia obviously getting those silver medals and they've been doing a lot of racing. I saw Kaylee McEwen racing 12 times this week. Incredible. Seven in three days, getting out there and still getting a silver medal and putting it together with her teammates and, of course, Team China getting that bronze medal, guys. What a way to close out the show, Penilla. I mean, that last leg from Team China was just incredible. She really outdid herself, mm. Li Bingji. Yeah. 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 I think it was a 52-0 split. Like, it was fast, it really was fast. fast. And you could see she was just holding on to that one. She wanted it so much for her team and for her country. And it was really nice to see China up there just really going for that race and also putting everything together. Um, very impressive, honestly. Yeah, that, that last leg, she ran down Summer McIntosh to, she take, did. to clip the bronze. Yeah. Can you imagine just casually running down a triple Olympic gold medalist? Like, <laughs> I'd, I'd put that on my wall. Or like, I'd frame that and stick it on my wall and be like, this is part of my credentials. <laughs> that deserves a medal in itself, honestly. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that were the races, of course. Uh, I just want to touch on a couple of highlights before we get out of there. So I'm going to throw this down the line. We're going to look at who will you, a standout athlete for you from this Olympic week. So Bailey, let's start with you. Let's start with the women. I've got to go with the home country, Katie Ledecky. She's absolutely killed it. I mean, she, we know she's born to be a distance swimmer and she's proved that. She did an amazing job this week. So she is my top choice, hands down. I'm going to go with uh, one Viking to another Viking, Sarah Schustrom. <laughs> I'm just, she amazes me. She's such a, a brilliant swimmer, uh, a really great champion and it's sprint. And sprint is so difficult, it's such a tight race, and she literally won uh, the 50 freestyle by like half the body length almost. It's just incredible. Sarah is incredible, as is Kitty. But I'm gonna go with my neighbor to the north, Summer McIntosh. What a phenomenal meet she had, 200, 400 IM, 400 free, like just all the way around, and even on those relays, she did get run down, but we'll forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> she still has a lot to grow in, and she's young. There's exciting things coming. Yeah, this is her second Olympic Games, and I don't even think she's finished school. Like, she's no, 17. 17, 17 yeah, at 17. a second Olympic Games. Like, come on, overachiever here. Um, <laughs> speaking of overachievers, my female pick of uh, the competition would be Kaylee McEwen to go the back-to-back -back double in the 100 meters and 200 meters backstroke. She's the first woman in Olympic history to do that. It's one thing to win an individual Olympic gold medal once. It's another thing to back that up three years later and then to do that twice in a row like and like we said she's had a massive week 12 swims and yeah hats off to Kaylee. Yeah amazing performance by her. I think mine will be I mentioned early tonight uh, you know the versatility of some of these athletes Zhang Yifei from uh, People's Republic of China and of course Kate Douglas has put on a show for us this week from USA. I loved you Kate you were amazing um, so you're my pick. All right let's move over to the men's program. Who is your standout male athlete of the week? I mean, I'm going to give you two, and I'm going to go with the obvious to start. Leon Marchand. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Oh, Why'd you pick her first? Yeah. <laughs> no, and because it was everyone's choice, I'm going to back it up with Josh Leon Doe. It was great seeing him come in, you know, the other night in, in place and finally get that silver medal. I know he was, you know, wanting to be on that podium, and he's accomplished a lot this week, just, you know, being, or this past couple of weeks, just being here. So I um, was rooting for him, so I was happy to see that. I'm gonna go with Bobby Fink and setting a world record on the last day of the meet in the 1500. And also that world record is just, it's already an incredible world record now, even more so incredible, incredible. But it's been a long meet for him as well. And doing that and going in, putting that energy into it, hands down, that's incredible, really. Because we see a lot of swimmers who actually struggle to keep their level throughout the meet because it's so taxing mentally and obviously physically. It was to me. Well, I had been calling. I said coming into the Olympic Games that the 100 meter freestyle for the men was going to be the most competitive race. Panjian Lei. I mean, what, what can I say? He, he blew everybody away by over a body length, broke the world record. Everybody's going to be studying that, figuring out how to do it. And then to follow that up with some incredible relay swims, especially at the end there, uh, taking that that crown, that crown jewel of the medley relay from the US, 
it's now in the hands of China. Yeah, I don't think that I've seen a winning margin in the men's 100 meters freestyle that big, like mm, in, in, in my living memory, you yeah. know, it was, it was phenomenal. Uh, I am going to go with a countryman, of course, because it would be un-Australian of me not to. Plus, he was our only male uh, gold medalist and he won the 50 freestyle by an absolute fingernail. Uh, Cam McAvoy and his story is phenomenal. This is his fourth Olympic Games. He's 30 years old. He nearly walked away from the sport in 2021 after those Olympic Games and then just decided to come back and play, like try and do things differently. He was tired of staring at the black line and pounding out the kilometres. And so he thought, I want to come back. I want to do the 50. How can I do things differently? And in his mind and in his own words, he said that just making it here was a win in his books. And uh, in his post-race interview, he spoke about his love and the joy that he felt entering that Olympic pool and that Olympic final. And he said that he would have been happy no matter what. Uh, but then, of course, <laughs> winning a gold medal, an Olympic title. The happiest. The happiest. And so, yeah, he, he was my real standout. A fantastic and amazing performance by him. I think, um, I mean, there's been so many all around, you know, it's really hard to just pick one. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pick two because my game, my <laughs> rules. Okay. Um, so Daniel Whiffen, I love seeing him get that Olympic gold. There were a lot of eyes on him, a lot of expectations, world champion, you know, breaking that short course world record, being a part of all of that sort of build up to this. To stand on top of that podium and get Ireland's first gold medal in swimming, it was an amazing thing. And seeing all of the Irish flags in there tonight, oh, gives me chills. Um, but I also have to give a shout out to my boy, Nicola Martinengi. Smashed it from the outside lane, finally getting that gold medal, you know? And we've seen him get the silvers, we've seen him at world championship levels, and he's always just been in the mix, always been in the mix. And to finally have that touch and to have his moment, um, that was pretty special to watch for me. What do you think of the bleached hair? I'm here for it. Look, look what you're talking to, girl. Look at my hair. Oh, no, 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 no. Mr. InSync no. here. <laughs> True. No, but I, I, I'm here you're for here it. You're here for it. I'm okay. here for it, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I like it. It's you know, very bright. It is, but it's summer. But I mean, now he has a bright gold medal to go with it, so maybe that was the secret. It's matching. Yeah, yeah. If I ever come back, hair, I'll, I'll, if I ever come back, I'll platinum blonde my hair. Maybe I that's the secret. Wait Ooh. to see that. I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, now you're not. Right, right, right. 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 Never say never. <laughs> Look, thank you so much for coming in and joining us for the last night. It's been so amazing. Have you guys in all week and wonderful to finish off with you. And thank you all uh, for watching at home. It's been such a pleasure recapping this incredible action from the Paris 2024 games. The next one, 2028, LA. We'll see you there, right, Bailey? We will. And thank you so much for being a wonderful co-host and of course to our wonderful guests. It's been a pleasure being a part of this amazing show and thank you for tuning in with us for another episode of About Last Night.